everyone, it's Lisa from BudgetEquestrian.com and today I'm going to show you a neat little DIY project of how to make a tail bag for your horse's tail. Tail bags are really handy to have, especially for show season or if you just want to make sure that your horse's tail grows out longer and they're really simple to make. So the materials you will need to make your own tail bag are a sewing machine, some scissors, some material. I got this at Walmart. It's like Lycra, so it's very soft and slinky feeling. A measuring tape, and I did get some bling that I wanted to put on, but then I changed my mind. I got two yards of material, so it cost me $3.94, which I have plenty of material to make a lot of tail bags. The first thing that I did was to cut my material. So what I did was fold it in half because the folded part, that's going to be the bottom of the bag so we don't have to sew that. And then I measured it off. My tail bags are 28 inches long. So I measured it six inches wide. That will give me plenty of room on either side to cut the material and then it is 28 inches long. If you wanted to, you could make it longer depending on how far you want this to tie into your horse's tail, but I figured about 24 inches is how big I want the bag to be, and then I would have four inches left over to make the tie straps. So after I measured off how long I wanted my tail bag to be, then I simply cut out the material. So once I had the tail bag cut out, then I was going to measure off how long I wanted the bag itself to be. So like I said, I want it to be 24 inches. So then I cut out four inches going about an inch and a half inside of that. and I simply folded the material over and duplicated the cut. You don't want to cut all the way through so that it would be basically cutting off a piece of the material because that leftover material will create the ties for the top of the bag when you are tying it into your horse's tail. So now that I have my tail bag cut out, now it's time to sew it. And like I've told you in my other DIY videos where I'm sewing something, I'm not a seamstress, I get really impatient, so I don't use pins. If you want it to be perfect, I would advise you to use pins because that will make sure that it is perfect. But like I said, I get a little impatient. So what I did was turn the material so that I'm basically sewing it inside out. And the reason I'm sewing it inside out is I want the seams to be on the inside of the bag and not the outside of the bag. And then that way also it will actually have that excess material. It will be on the inside of the bag as well and you won't see it. So it will look professional and nice. So when I was sewing the bag, I just went really slow with my sewing machine because this material, um, it's very, very stretchy. So I just wanted to make sure that I got a nice straight line while I was sewing. And this sewing machine isn't anything fancy. We got it at Walmart, but it's excellent for someone like me who is not a sewing person or a seamstress. It's pretty straightforward and easy and 
you just kind of pull it out of the box and, and start sewing. So when I'm sewing, I'm just doing one side, starting at the bottom of the tail bag and working my way up. And then once I get to the top edge, I go back and forth a little bit because that will make the stitching more secure. And once the first side of the tail bag is done, then I'm going to stitch the other side. Again, I start at the bottom where the fold is because that's the bottom of the bag. And I just sew in a straight line all the way to the top. And sometimes it's kind of hard to sew slowly because you're using a foot pedal on the sewing machine. So it's kind of like when you're driving a car, you just want to give it a little bit of gas so it goes nice and slow. That way you have more control of where your stitch is and where it is in placement on the material. And then I just sewed right to the edge of the top and then run the stitch backwards and then forward one more time. And again, that will give it more security and it'll be a better stitch at the end so it doesn't come apart. Now, once I have the both sides of the tail bag sewn, then it's time to sew the part where you're going to tie it in. You don't necessarily have to do this, but I wanted to make sure that it looked pretty and nice. So I did fold in the sides on the ties and sewed those as well. So it'll have a nice sharp edge. So when you're sewing the top ties for your tail bag, you will have two ties. So that would mean you would have four edges that you have to stitch. And then if you wanted to stitch the top of the tie too, you could do that as well. And the reason I did that, like I said, I wanted it to look finished, but I also didn't want the material to get like frayed on the edges, which I'm assuming would probably happen once I start using the tail bags. So I wanna make these last as long as possible and I wanted them to look nice too. And then once they are all sewed on the seams and the edges, then you can turn your tail bag inside out and you will get to see your finished product. And see, this way you can see the little ruffled edges of the, the material. So that's another reason why I wanted to make it pretty on the edges of the tops where I'm going to be tying it into my horse's tails. This whole project was really simple to do and it didn't take me very long. I was able to make two tail bags in about 15, 20 minutes tops. So it really was a fast project and it was really inexpensive. Now that I've done all my sewing, cleaned up all the little loose strings and everything, I want to be able to tell the difference on my tail bags. So I decided to put my horse's names on the tail bags. And the first one I did was Frisbee. So I just got some stickers that have some bling to them because I like bling. And I got a 
glue that is safe for material and I just put a little bit of the glue on the back of the pretty stickers and just put them on the tail bag. Now to keep the tail bag from the glue on the back of the stickers from sticking to both sides of the tail bag, I did put a piece of cardboard inside the tail bag so that it wouldn't stick to it. And this is my finished product. This is Frisbee's tail bag. And it looks nice, it looks professional, and now I have tail bags for my horses. I haven't put Ethan's name on his yet. But hopefully now you know that you can make your very own tail bag and it's very inexpensive to do. It's a fun project. Like I said, it's really easy to make this. It's really fun and I think you'll have a good time. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and sometimes on Saturday. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.